Okay, so I'm gonna say something and I feel like I'm gonna get shunned for it, but I'm gonna say it anyways. I never really watched The Office. I know, but I wanna be authentic, I don't wanna lie. Having said that, my guest today, I don't know him as Dwight. No, I know him as Rain, the person who heavily supported me in season one and is back to support me in season two. Welcome to my crib, Rain Wilson, what's up? Hey Lily, how's it going? It's so good to see you. Before we even get started, I need to say thank you so much for taking the time to be on my show. Not only were you so supportive in season one, but you did my special when my show got announced. You were in episode one, and now you're back here again. Lily, I am your biggest fan, and I have a confession to make to you. Okay. You have not seen The Office. I have never watched YouTube. You know what? Me neither, so that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> How crazy is that? Now, here on the show, I, I, I committed to asking hard-hitting questions. Like, I want to have conversations that matter and that are authentic to me. So the first thing I want to ask you about is very close to my heart. I want pigs one day. Like, this is a true thing. I actually want dogs, pigs, and monkeys. Like, I want a zoo of animals. <laughs> you have pigs, is this correct? My wife and I have two Vietnamese pot pigs that live out in our backyard. Okay, I need to know everything about this. What is a day-to-day -day like tending to pigs? A pig that's like 200, 300 pounds. Well, here's the problem. The one pig, Amy, is sweetness and light. She is a little princess mm -hmm. and she, she dances over to you and sits down and she wants to be scratched and she'll eat out of your hand and she's dainty. And the other one is a big, angry, horrible creature uh, named the Baron Von Snortington. Just, here's a really terrible picture. Oh, that's a very long, I was not anticipating the pig being that big. I don't know what I had in my mind, but it was not that. Yeah. And. <laughs> He, um, he tries to be the alpha male of the pig pen. And so sometimes we get into it, me and Snorty, um, and I have to out alpha him. What does it look like to out alpha a pig? What, what do you have to do to demonstrate your strength over a pig? Well, like I'm going to feed him and he'll charge me like a boar, like a wild boar from the jungles of Borneo. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, dude, I'm trying to feed you carrots and mush. What are you doing? So. What I'll do, I don't know if I'm gonna still be in camera. Yeah, yeah, is you're good. You've gotta, um, you stomp your feet. It's almost like um, a, a Maori haka dance. Oh, yeah, you yeah, yeah. You stomp your feet and go, ah! And then he gets terrified and he squeals and runs away and that shows him who's boss. So you're saying you actually go into the pen and you do this and the pig understands, like animals will understand that reaction. They say that about a lot of animals, if you have to display you know, dominance, you stomp and you hold your ground if you wanna be listened yeah. to, right? Like if I do this to my showrunner, will this work? It works with humans. It yeah, works with absolutely. humans, right? Yeah. Here's the thing, because I, I keep telling them it's too cold in the house and I keep saying turn on the heat and they like never listen. So I'm just gonna real quick. Yo, Neil. Let's try it. I need the heat in the house. I'll let you know what happens, Rain. Did you stomp your feet? I did, I did and it kind did of hurt. Did you stomp your feet, Lily? I did and it kind of hurt, to be honest. We'll work on you it. You gotta do squats. Okay, we'll work on it, we'll work on it. So where are you right now? Where am I talking to you from? This is my office. I have um, a lot of my office-y kind of things here. Can I have a little tour? Um, what do you got I going have, on in here? Here's one of my favorite things. Um, I, I haven't uh, hung it up yet, but my friend is a painter. His yeah. name is Joe Sola. Yeah. And he did this beautiful painting of two men's intertwined penises. <laughs> wearing later hosen. I, I have a feeling we're not gonna be allowed to show this, so I will, if you just hold it up for me, I will describe to the audience what, what it is. Dang. How's this? Oh, great, that's good. Like, yeah, is that get, yeah, maybe, I think you gotta cover the other balls too. There you go, there you go. Now we could be able to show it. It's two men and um, they're doing this. Wearing lederhosen. Yes, sorry, very, very poor detail. Their penis is, they're pretzeled, pretzeled. That is a good way to put it. The funniest thing is at our old house, yeah. we just moved a few months back, I had it hanging in my office and my son, when he was little, had a friend over and the friend ran into my office, saw the painting, his little jaw dropped, he was like in the first grade and he went running out of my office and later that night I got a call from his parents and they said, um, Rain, is it true that you have a painting with intertwined penises hanging on the wall? <laughs> I was like, yes, I do, I do, but it's art. It's not filth. You are so fascinating to me. There's there's so much to talk about with you, but I have to touch on the fact that you had an epic moment, one of many in 2020, where you had a crossover moment with the one, the only Taylor Swift. Tell me about that. One morning I woke up and my, my phone was like popping off the hook and people were like, oh my God, 
Taylor Swift tweeted a Dwight meme. So I, I just responded almost as if what, how Dwight would respond and said, I do not know who this is. Is she, is this the inventor of the Swiffer? <laughs> and um, the internet went crazy. It must have been a really slow news day. I, I love that so much. So your phone explodes, because I can imagine that Dwight probably gets used as a meme and GIF a lot. He's, that's kind of what Twitter was uh, created for. I should sue them, yes. You should, you should, you should get some sort of royalty. Can I ask you a question? Yes, I, really. I, I would love that's, to pick. That's kind of yes. what we do. Yeah, that's you not ask, the point of this. But, you ask questions, but I'll I, answer I them. want to ask yeah. a question that's not even on my cards, to be honest. It's just genuinely, I would love to know. I am not successful yes. enough to be someone who's recognized as a character from an epic, successful show. You know, people usually come up to okay. me and are like, mm -hmm. Aren't you that girl whose name I don't know that makes video on the internet, you know? But you, you are very known <laughs> as Dwight from a successful show, The Office. Now, I'm, I can imagine that's probably, like, bittersweet. Yeah, thank you for that thoughtful question. Absolutely. It's, it's a mixed bag. Like, if I run into people and they'll be like, Oh my God, it's Dwight! And I want to say, and I don't say, Dwight's a fictional character. He's a fabrication in a writer's room played on a television set. I am not Dwight, but but I love them and mm -hmm. I and I care about them and they gave me a, a, a career, but it is it gets a little bit tricky sometimes. It's like what I what I appreciate is when people are like, I love your work, Mr. Wilson. A little yeah. bit annoying sometimes. I, I really appreciate you being honest and being vulnerable in the answer because I like I said, I can't imagine what it's like, but I could I could see that that would be a little challenging. So thank you so much for that. So you got obviously an epic show. You got lots of other stuff you're doing. You got your intertwined penises. You got your your crossover with Taylor Swift. What else is going on in your world? Like what else is going on? You know, a lot of us have been using the pandemic to uh, master certain skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been taking bassoon lessons. I feel bad because I already said I didn't watch The Office. And now I'm going to have to admit that I don't know what the heck a bassoon is. Two generations meeting okay. midstream right here. You have, I've oh, got you have it for one. you, Lily. That is very large. Check that out. I have. I can confidently that's say I've never said. seen a bassoon. Yes, that's what she said. I have never seen a bassoon. It doesn't even fit in the frame. I've been working a little bit, and I know that you're kind of retooling your show in some ways, yeah. and I wrote you a theme song. You wrote me a theme song? Yeah. Would you like to hear it? I um, absolutely would like to hear it on your bassoon, large bassoon. Are you ready, America? Feast your ears. Sing, Lily, sing! You know, and, and it goes on and on and on like that. I don't have an ending for it yet. I... But maybe, maybe something like a free jazz improvisation. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, I am... Utterly shook. I, I'm not even joking when I say like I'm I'm almost close to tears because no one has ever done that for me. <laughs> that's the kind of guy hey, I am. That's, that's very, my very... gift to you. That's awesome. You are a very talented author, actor, bassoonist. Is that the term bassoonist? Bassoonism? Bassoonizing? Bassooning? Yes, Bass that's there. right. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you have a new movie called Don't you Tell a Soul. I actually watched it. I watched it last night. For people who haven't seen it yet, tell people about Don't Tell a Soul. So Don't Tell a Soul is a cool new independent film coming out later this month, and it's a kind of a twisted cat and mouse story. I play a security guard named Mr. Hamby, who, while chasing these kind of punk kids, falls into this hole out in the middle of the woods. There's a lot of surprises and a lot of twists and turns along the way, and nobody is kind of who you think they are. Yeah, I, I fully read this summary before I watched the film and I was like, oh, this this seems pretty straightforward. And then I was blown away by everything. I want to show a clip real quick. Check this out. Give it. Whoa. Anyone see us? No. No, let's go before you do. Come on. Let's go. I knew you had it in you. Sure you did.
of all, there has never been a clip that portrayed what 2020 felt like more than that clip. Just <laughs> that like, I was like relatable, relatable.